Welcome out, ladies and ge gentlemen. I can't even. This is the first thing in the season. This is what I do. Is this let's take two. Welcome out, ladies and gentlemen, to this week two RGL.gg matchup. And it's going to be a great one here on Koth Product with Froyotech versus Ascent, two monsters inside of the Invite universe now coming over to Prolander. And they're going to be duking it out, which should be a great one. And I got to my side. The man, the myth, the legend, Viper. How are you doing out here tonight? I'm doing good, Sigafu. I am excited. There are some big names in the server today, and I'm I'm really excited to see him just go at it, man. Yeah, it should be... Uh, yeah, it, it's going to be curious to see how they play and how they adapt. I mean, Ascent has already played their first game of the season. Froyotech uh, got a forfeit win, um, as DPM was not able to show up for the match due to some family emergencies. But the thing we saw out of Ascent in the first week was nothing really spectacular. Actually, they, they looked really bad, to be completely honest. Um, but they were also playing a payload map, which it was clear that a lot of their players just were not comfortable. They did not understand how to play a payload map, what was required out of their classes. They just played it like it was a 5 CP map. And the nice thing about tonight is that they're going to be playing a cough map, which they've played before. They've played many a times. And it'll be, I expect we're going to be seeing a lot better um, out of Ascent, but let's just take it out right away here to the pick bands of this week as uh, we have a little bit of a change up this season in how we are doing them. We added two more weapons that were banned by default in every match, and we lowered the number of total bands uh, that the players choose from, but it'll remain the total number of bands the same. So uh, looking out here, what are you seeing out of Froyotex from what their bands were? Uh, I'm really interested in the Gerardi ban. I, I'm I'm questioning what that is because I know I, it looks like last week Ascent had Patty on Sniper, I believe, and uh, they're definitely going to be wanting to run a full-time Sniper on Viaduct. Uh, but Froyo does have Bore, the Sniper main. I, I know that he is quite proficient with the Gerardi, so I think that's definitely an interesting ban out of them. Uh, the Engineer weapons that I'm seeing and the Natasha... Definitely smart bans. I mean, of course, Banny is a star player on Scout, and you don't want anything messing with him. So uh, I, I think all of those definitely make sense. Yeah, it's. I think the thing with you know uh, having the engineer band is that's just something that Froyotech has done consistently. Is they've gone for the engineer weapons, which is kind of funny because they were also the only team last season to pretty much run a full time engineer on Eric. Uh, who's been doing, uh, he did a fantastic job, but the, the thing is, is even they would, they would go and ban engineer weapons, but then they would go run an engineer just spite, and he would do really well. Uh, and, and now looking more at a, at a sense picks, you know, you can kind of tell they still don't understand what are the weapons to be scared of in this format, and, and what do we need to really be worrying about um, as they go after the critical making sense uh, you know, Critical can be very strong in the hands of a good scout. The Soda Popper being taken out as well, which is surprising of a weapon that, you know, you have the second weapon ban. What do you want to take away? And you're taking away the Soda Popper. I feel like that was a, uh, you know, probably unnecessary. Something that probably could have been saved until later. I don't even know if anybody even would have used the Soda Popper. Uh, it's been a very uncommon banned weapon. And even when it's been unbanned, I don't think we've ever saw it. The Vitasaw as well. Again, it's one of these weapons that people, it's banned in every single league, but... I don't know if I've seen any medics running the Vitasaw uh, all season last year, despite it being ban unbanned in pretty much all the games. And then, of course, finally, the Reserve Shooter, uh, which, you know, makes sense. We've seen that uh, be taken care of a lot, taking away uh, the possibility of a Pyro class. Because with the scent, they, are, they do have Uncle Dane on their team, and he pretty much does not feel comfortable running anything but Engineer. And I think that is going to be... Honestly, one of their weaknesses is that Engineer needs to be a flex class, generally speaking, in this role. And I'm kind of curious to see if we'll see him mix it up at all. Um, but even in the last game when he was struggling on Engineer, he didn't really do that at all. And, you know, you've played against Froyotech. Obviously, they have some changes uh, in their classes here. You know, who are their kind of standout players? I mean, besides all of them. Yeah, I, I, my answer was actually going to be all of them. So uh, thank you for making it difficult for me. <laughs> but obviously the one the big one that stands out immediately is Banny. I mean, being like the main caller, the the big presence in comms and of course the crazy DM. Um he is probably the biggest standout player for me and and then also Blaze. I mean, part of that is probably because I I'm a Roamer player in sixes and I love Roamer 
and uh, Blaze is just a, a crazy sixes roamer, but Blaze is just one of those soldiers that has like the, the crazy DM and he's also just got the, the huge, huge brain. So I think that is a, that's a huge factor. Yeah, interesting. It looks like we actually have a little bit of uh, a change up tonight from what we saw in the last game for Ascent. Uh, Mela was out here. Patty was playing Sniper. Nursey on Medic. Uh, but now we have Badonski coming out in Rando. I'm trying to remember who is in the place. I believe Yamps was out instead. So we now have Rando coming out here. So this is going to be his first game playing here. And I'm going to be kind of curious to see what actual classes they choose to play. Last week, it was Patty running the Sniper class. And this week, you know, who are they going to be using? I mean, I'm assuming Mela on Soldier. Uh, is Badonski going to be playing Demo? Uh, they have so many different players who have such, you know, are so good at their different classes, but... You know, usually you have two soldiers. In this format, you can only have one. It's a 7v7 format, one of each class, meaning that two classes are available at any time. That is the, the pro lander format. And then we do pick bands before each game to allow teams to have that customization to not make it that it's a static whitelist, but teams really do get to choose about what they, weapons they think are truly broken and, and going on with that. So, yeah, I mean, with Ascent, honestly... This is a better roster than what I'm looking at. But again, I think their biggest weakness is going to come down to Uncle Dane. Um, you know, even looking at his stats last week, his shotgun accuracy was only at 43% compared to uh, the other engineer of uh, Spamfest, who is, a, you know, a very solid sixes player who is closer uh, above 50%. You know, Uncle Dane, though, here's the one thing, though, is they did save the short circuit. And, uh, that that's what when I was watching Mayla's stream when he was doing it and he was like, What weapon should I save for Dane? What what is an engineer weapon that he wants to have? And I think the short circuit might be a, a thorn in the side of, you know, Froyotech if it's played right. But you know, between these two teams, I mean, you, you played against Froyotech on this map. What are the strategies that you kind of saw them employ um last season? Well, I know they, they were definitely running a full time heavy. I remember that for certain. And I uh, they they really played very well around their heavy for for you know being sixes players that don't play a lot with a heavy as as you know Highlander main players might play they they really just kind of used him as like a giant damage shield to allow like players like Banny and Habib to just do like a ton of damage uh, and then being able to back up into him and get protected and they that's what yeah we kind of saw that a lot out of them and and last season the other thing too is that when uh, it was actually this was the map that Froyotech almost got beaten on. This is the closest uh, that they came to a loss when they were playing against Cat Noises, now known as Faint Gaming, uh, inside the league. And it ended up going to a 3-4. It was incredibly close. It was, the other thing we saw a lot of is that the classes were being changed a lot. You know, Banny started out at Pyro, and then he switched to Scout with Yams, who was formerly on Froyotech. And now we're seeing Banny actually in the pregame warm-up. He's playing Demo Man, which would be the first time... We would see Banny on demo inside of this league and playing with uh, Psy on Scout. So really interesting to see uh, these classes uh, mixing it up here. And I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if they hold out with this, but I got to imagine so. And then, yeah, Blaze is currently on Engineer. I'm assuming he'll switch off. And yeah, I'm, I don't know. It'll be, it'll be kind of curious. I mean, of the classes that you saw last season um, in the teams that you played on, um, obviously the Flex class, you talked about kind of playing the Flex class of Engineer, Spy, and Pyro, do you think we'll see a lot of the different classes being mixed up from that flex role, or do you think it's going to be a lot more static between these teams? Oh, I think there's definitely going to be a lot of mix-up. I mean, at least for me, I'm kind of when I play flex, I was stuck to those three classes because we have a like a heavy main on our team. But uh, these players, like they are all capable of playing pretty much anything. I'm really interested to see what classes Ascent is going to break out because. They have three soldier mains, if I'm counting correctly. Showstopper, uh, Mela, and Rando, all on one team. So I'm interested to see what they play. I know Rando did off-class a lot to Gunslinger, NG, and ESEA, but of course Dane is probably going to be playing Engineer. So I'm hoping to see some Mela Pyro. I'm excited to possibly be seeing that because he, he is a notorious, uh, very good Pyro player. <laughs> But I definitely think they're going to be switching around, trying a lot of different things, and it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see which one of them actually gets that much coveted soldier spot. Yeah, it'll 
they'll be curious to see what they want to do. I'm guessing Mela is going to be kind of playing a little bit of their flex role with engineer uh, of Uncle Dane um, playing um, engineer class full time. Um, and we kind of saw that a little bit last week. You know, and it, honestly, right now, for a sense, this is just a learning curve. Um, you know, it's a question of will they be able to pick up and, and improve from where they were last week. Honestly, last week they got beat by Faint Gaming like incredibly badly. Like it was not even a close match. That was the match we were in a cast. It was like this is going to be a close one, uh, but it turned out to be an incredibly one-sided one. Uh, and it was just that you know, again, it, it came down to them not understanding how to pay play the load, but it's also them just playing on classes and understanding what classes they need to play and and kind of figuring that out. And so I imagine that even though I, I'm guessing Froyo Tech is going to be able to take the first round, uh, maybe even the first half as we, as we do play a best of three per half. So it's going to go to two up to three halves um, as it goes on. But I, I assume as the game goes on, we're going to see Ascent get more and more comfortable uh, figuring out the classes that they want to play, the formations they want to play. Um, and again, this is also going to be a map that they're going to they're be a lot more comfortable on. So um, we do have, I believe, 14 inside of the server. So hopefully we'll be going live here very, very shortly uh, as we're just kind of waiting for them to get readied up here. But uh, do you like, you know, Koth as a, a pro lander for pro lander? Or is it, uh, are you more of a payload man yourself? You know, I, I like both. I definitely think, see, the problem with Koth is sniper is just so crazy especially on viaduct and that's that's something that i think is going to be really interesting in ma this match because there are of course a lot of you know top invite players really really good aimers on ascent but i think boar is probably like undisputedly the absolute best sniper in the game as of right now and uh somebody is going to have to be shutting him down on sniper for ascent to win this match so whoever is going to be stepping up that plate, I'm interested to see how they perform on Sniper. It, it's really, and that's a lot of how this format is played. It's about controlling the enemy Sniper because Sniper is just so utterly, utterly powerful. It's really what they're going to do. Uh, I checked the server. It looks like they are live in real time, so we should be started up here uh, pretty shortly. And we'll see um, this opening mid-fight uh, coming up. And I'm excited to see... Uh, again, the class formations, what are we going to see early on here? Um, we now see Psy switching over to the Pyro class. But as you said, so coming back to what you were talking about is working with the Sniper, taking him down. And honestly, it would make sense to me that you need to run a full-time Spy if you're going to be playing against Boar. Unless your Sniper is able to do so well, uh, you know, to be able to keep up with them. You know, but we'll see as we're live right now. This is the Week 2 matchup. It's Froyotech versus Ascent. And we're coming out here to our first mid-fight. Froyotech on the blue side. On red is going to be Ascent with Yams getting to the point first. Froyotech opting to have a little bit of a slower rollout as they are currently running Pyro. No Pyro currently on the Ascent side as uh, Habib on the Devilman class. Hooking up with Cookie Jake. Trying to get some spam across the point. As High Five sitting onto that cliff. Spamming down with Eric, the counterpart, on the opposite side. But no frags coming out for either team yet. Yeah, Badonski actually went down to Boar at the very start of that mid-fight, so no demo for Ascent. Habib pushing across the point, Mela goes down, so no sniper out of Ascent, and Freya's going to take this mid pretty handily off of that early sniper pick. Uh, losing their demo man so quickly um, is definitely going to slow your team down. A nice job there out of Habib. He actually takes out the teleporter from... Inge uh, from uh, wh what? What? I I'm trying to talk, but I can't, because Boar is just getting so many frags. He pushed up onto grass, picked up two more there. Now Nursey's a little bit caught out, is able to keep herself alive. But once again, Boar on a 5k in the first 30 seconds. And we're talking about how the sniper is going to be crucial in this game. And already Boar is making a mark for himself, just dominating this point. And there is no sniper, or no, Mela is now going sniper. Was he sniper early on here? I'm not sure. He did roll out sniper. Okay, he did, but he just got taken out there early on. Psy gets going down, and here comes out an uber trade onto the point. It's going to be a little bit better for the defense of Freyotech defending the point right now. As they're continuing just to pick up more and more frags, Bor takes down Bodonski once again. Honestly, I'm wondering if Bodonski has put out any damage yet, because he's just had his head taken off every single time he's been alive. Yeah, another headshot ringing out there from Boar. He is really just holding this point. And I really think that uh, the Gunslinger ban is just coming into effect already because Ascent having the full-time level 3 NG 
cannot help to pressure the sniper at all. I mean, the only thing it can really do right now, especially when you're trying to push onto the point, that's always a challenge. Uh, and it really needs to be make sure that it's coordinated. Dane got taken out uh, last time uh, when he's trying to get onto the point, but the Donksy goes down again. Seven frags in the favor of Boar. I think four of the are, four of them are on the demo man. Uncle Dane is starting to move up his sentry gun. He gets it on to the grass side as Supercharge is going to come out. A lot of milking actually going for a cookie jake as he's not even being contested right now as Mela gets taken out by Boar. The pyro charge is coming across. No one can air blast him back because there's no pyro onto the right side. Obstep just back it up. The gun gets taken out and the point continues to remain in the favor of Royal Attack. Yeah, you know, I, I honestly, I would not mind seeing Uncle Dane going spy here. I know he's not a spy player. But I think even just the threat of the sniper getting insta-killed would pressure him a little bit, and I think that's what Ascent needs to just get onto this point. And that's what we saw out of Froyotech last season, is that they would run a spy when they didn't control the point, and then switch to engineer when they did. And here comes a bomb in from Showstopper, was able to get some damage down onto the enemy medic, but not enough as uh, Badonski putting out some nice stickies. See if he's able to connect up. Does finally take down the scout, though. Nursey eating some damage. The soldier, Blaze, jumping in so big. Goes a little bit too far. Gets taken out there. And now only four players left alive for Froyotech. But Boar, he's peeking from that cliffside. He sees Badonski. He wants to get another shot onto him. And the point will go down in the favor, though, of Ascent for the first time this game. As Yams picks up a nice frag onto the heavy, though ultimately going down. And allow Froyotech to push back in here. Yeah, oh... Here's a sentry gun denying Habib a little bit there. Looks like this Uber is going to take down Nursey though. Banny pushing forward onto her with the pistol. Oh, but she gets the pack and gets out. So Nursey will survive with advantage here. And Cookie going down. Well, only 16 seconds left. That's not going to give a lot of time for Ascent to try to push back out here. And Nursey only has Mela right now forward to try to help her out. And here comes the Rockets into the air. Pops her into up, but able to get the Uber off to save it. Four seconds left, pushing into the... Heavy takes him down, and only three players left alive here for Froytech. Two of them are respawns, and uh, so far so good, but they have to hold perfectly for two minutes and 17 seconds. They at least are even Ubers now on the defensive side, but we'll see if they can make good of this as they're trying to work in Mela on the grass. Yeah, right here, Froyo is probably pretty calm here, just looking to play off their sniper. Boar goes down, so I would not be surprised to see them run some kind of sack wave here, maybe get a couple of Ascent players down and re-push with the respawns. But as yeah, Eric goes down, so they are playing a little bit passive here, probably just waiting for their sniper to come up. They have to be careful. Yeah, they just lost three players, being way too aggressive. Uncle Dane's also eating a lot of damage, and huge stickies coming out from Habib. The gun goes down, the scout is coming across the point, the overcharge is up here. For the red side, still only at 90%. Showstopper jumping in. I don't think he realized that he might have been able to get a kill onto him. Now here comes out the Supercharge from Froyotech, and they're just going to clean up everybody. Is they're going to come back, take this point, take the first round. And Mela gets one more shot onto board to pad those stats, but uh, really a solid showing out of Froyotech here in this first round, but Ascent seemed to pick it up as it went later into it. Yeah, I think maybe... Mela is warming up a little bit the sniper. He definitely seems to be hitting a lot more shots now than he was at the start of the match. So we'll see what happens here. And a lot more aggressive uh, mid fight. Last time both teams were playing very passively though. It was also partially because Badonski went down. Yams goes down as well as the engineer. Bandy picking up one more on the side with the help of his team. And just so good. Froytech is just so good at cleaning up these kills. Now Nursey has to be careful. Mela is looking for that shot onto Cookie Jake, but Habib doing a good job spamming him out, not allowing him to get comfortable. Now Bandy jumping in here goes down. Ultimately, a little bit more comfort for Ascent to try to push back on here, maybe working through it, but it, Uncle Dane gets taken out. Once again, he actually did switch to the Spy class, but uh, looks like he got spotted out there. Yeah, I would like to see him continue to do that, just, just to switch it up a little bit, maybe try and, you know, catch Boar or Cookie Jake out. Uber exchange coming out here. Yomp's, Yomp's taking the majority of the Uber. He escapes, gets the force out. So it's not looking too bad for Ascent. They, they, their medic lived this mid. They got an exchange out. So now they're just kind of looking for an opening here. Uncle Dane did finally get crossed the midpoint as they do pick up one, make that two. No, Blaze is able to keep his life. He ultimately trades out. Bandy now 1v1 against this heavy. He's going to go all the way back to spawn as Habib's pushing into them. Nursey 
Doing a good job. Great jukes coming out of Nursey as Banny went all the way back round. Now onto the enemy cliff. As we see, Ascent trying to push up a little bit, but Banny takes down Mela. But Frags were coming out on the backside as Uncle Dane did pick up a kill onto Cookie Jake. I didn't even see that. Was that a drop? But it, Nursey gets traded in kind, but the point will go finally in the favor of Ascent. And much better this time around as they only were a minute off the clock before they took it. Yeah, that's why I think maybe the Spy might just be a better class than the Engineer for Dane to be playing on this map, especially since the Wrangler and the Mini Sentry are banned. So really, he shackled to such a defensive playstyle on Engineer that maybe like any other class really would be kind of a, a better choice to make offensive plays and like make openings, which is what Ascent needs right now. Currently, they're down about 20%. Not that big of a deal. They'll slow them a little bit. We haven't seen Ascent do a lot of suicide waves, which I think is a little bit of a mistake. Sai getting very aggressive onto the grass, taking down Showstopper as they actually just trade with each other there, tossing out some uh, stuff as Boar picks up Nursey with a body shot. And Boar just on a tear. I'm very curious to see the stats. So currently, he's second in the server in terms of points, and I can only imagine he has an insane amount of frags. Yeah, Boar just ran onto the enemy team's bridge, uh, double headshot rando, and ran away. Boar currently has 22 frags in the server. The closest person to him, 13. Monster. That man is a monster. It needs to be put, like, uh, maybe you don't need to ban weapons. Just ban Boar. See what they can do with that. Eric gets taken out from Mela. Now Boar and Mela in a little bit of a 1v1. Actually, Boar gets the better of that using the me <laughs> the melee and Ascent is just struggling to figure out how to push out here. And now Pyro from behind, making the plays, takes down the scout. Not able to get any more, but Banny used that aggression to kind of poke into them onto the side. Now Blaze over the top, gets blown back. Nice job there by the heavy of Yams, catching him out in the sky. And another one goes down, a showstopper got taken out, trying to bomb into the enemy team. But we'll see if this is a chance for Ascent to push across the point. Dane's trying to get himself in position behind Boar, but will it be soon enough? Now we have now seen a little bit of a uh, clash shakeup. Mela now on Pyro, and Rando on Sniper. So we'll see um, if that'll work for them right now. As Badonski holding forward for their team, though 80%, so about a 60% advantage from Frodo Attack. Honestly, I mean they just, yeah, they they just need to walk across a point and they'll be able to take this. There's no chance. I mean, it just seems like Ascent. The biggest thing for me right now is Ascent is just so consistently... I mean, they're just losing one to DM battles, but they're just also just alone. Like, they are just consistently alone in, in really weird spots, getting aggressive at weird times. And this is the thing that we saw as we come into the end of the first half here. This is the problem that we saw with them when it came to the upward match, is that they were just so utterly... Uh, you know, just discombobulated in the way they were doing things, as we're going to get readied up here for the second half right away. Yeah, I think looking at the stats from the match that Ascent played last week, I know Andrew, the sniper from Faint, had a really good game against them. He was, you know, topping the stats, just doing an absolutely huge amount of work. And uh, I, I really, I think I attribute, like, the tough time that they had in that match, not necessarily to Payload, but just to Sniper being a really good class against their specific team. Yeah, and Boar must have his speakers so loud because he heard Dane trying to decloak. Mela uh, is now switched on to the medicinal class, as that is a clean wipe for Freyotech as they are doing this. Yeah, now on to Engineer. And I got to imagine Ascent is just a little bit on tilt here. Uh, you know, that they're just kind of going off classing. They, I, I just don't think they believe in themselves to be able to do this, um, to be able to pick this up. And so now they're just going to kind of enjoy themselves here because, it, to be honest, it's not close. Their play style just isn't working yet. Um, as Eric gets a backstab on Mela and spawn, in spawn, the spy gets a backstab onto the enemy medic. Yeah, a uh, little bit of a microcosm of how this entire game has been going for Ascent, unfortunately. Just kind of Froyo walking in and sort of just doing that no respect uh, playstyle that they have going on right now. Yeah, I mean, there's just a clear lack of respect coming out of Froyo Tech. They're completely shutting them down right now. Bondonsky going out completely alone. But yeah, I mean, you can just see uh, the Ascent players, like they... Uh, 
they just aren't, they're not enjoying it right now. Habib gets a kill on Aranda there, and uh, he's gonna go down pretty low. And it looks like Uncle Ding back capped him. Or no, that was a that was a Froyo Tech finally capping the midpoint uh, in their favor as a Showstopper gets taken out, and Froyo Tech uh, continuing just to kind of hold on here. And we can see Rando now switching to the scout as Mela now onto Pyro, Nursey back onto Medic. A lot of switching to see if they can figure out what they need to do. But honestly, just get an Uber charge up, get it built up, push together. Uh, if you're going to run an Engineer, try to get it to a level 2 Sentry Gun, get it placed down behind the fight. You know, just, just work together. Uh, but right now, Blaze is doing a good job just spamming damage in that corridor, and here comes out the charge on to the Pyro. Wow. Just insult to injury as Frey Tech picks up another Medic pick. Yeah, Psy is, uh, he's doing pretty well in the Pyro class here. I'm liking the Psy Pyro theory that that Freya Tech has going on. I mean, Pyro is incredibly powerful in this format. Uh, with, I mean, especially if you don't have an enemy pile to run against them, but Mela, I think, was down or wasn't paying attention when that Uber Charge came in, because that complete circumstance could have been, th like, they could have stopped that. And I can see Eric has now a level 2 sentry gun inside of, outside of the, the point. Froyotech is, like, dominating. And, and this is the thing that I was talking with someone um, last week after I saw Ascent playing against Fame Gaming. I was like, if this is how they're playing, I think they're the fifth place team. Like, I genuinely don't even believe that Ascent would be in the top five um, if they played as poorly as they did on Upward. As we do finally get an Uber Charge out here, a little bit better uh, for the Ascent side as... a. Uh, we got Rando on the back cap, taking one down. Mela does at least use that flare gun to his advantage uh, to pick up one more. They finally might come down with this point in this stronghold from Prefect Tech. Finally goes down, but I mean, for how long, really? I can't imagine Ascent will be able to hold on to this point for too long, uh, though they are down Uber just a little bit. I'm liking this Mela Pyro. I've heard rumors of uh, Mela perhaps maining Pyro after the Pyro update. It looks like he's gearing up for that. Yeah, it looks like he, I mean, I heard him talking about that on stream, about wanting to use those new, you know, weapons. And that's one of the curious things we'll see is, you know, how that extra mobility will help Pyros inside this format. Will we see more of them be able to be played as uh, Freddy Tech just aggressing across point, picking up frags left and right. Boar is very muted this game, though. I guess it's also just because he didn't have a lot of heads to shoot at since they were trapped in spawn the entire time. But Freddy Tech just working across point. Actually, nice job by Badonski. Does take down the heavy. Gets the force out from the enemy team. But though Nursi got taken out there earlier on, Habib with the nice stickies taking her out. And Freddy Tech will come back down with the point and only a minute left for them to take this third round. Yeah, Rando takes out Boar here. It looks like... Ascent's having a much better time after they actually get out of spawn. It's definitely a tough map product is to escape that forward hold that they were stuck in for so long. Yeah, it's they really, I mean, they finally kind of pushed together and they were able to get out of it. But once again, they're just pushing in alone. Nursi gets taken out once again by Habib. And, uh, you know, as we come into this fourth round, as I'm sure Frodo Tech will hold on to this for the next 30 seconds. It's kind of just a question of will Ascent, you know, put some effort into this? Will they actually try? It looks like they're kind of getting onto some classes they feel a little bit more comfortable with. Um, you know, is Eric's going to get a stab on it too? Or sorry, going to ambassador. Doesn't even backstab the sniper. Just chooses to shoot him in the head. Mela gets taken out as well. Uh, but, I mean, you're, you're looking at this. I mean, Freytech is obviously a powerhouse, but you guys have matched up against Freytech. You've done well against them. You know, um, as you are currently a player on Velocity Esports, where would you put them in terms of ranking? What what number would you put them at? If you if this is the ascent that we're going to see for the rest of the season, do you think they can make top four? Do you think ascent can make playoffs even? I would say that ascent is would probably be the. I'm gonna not rank my own team in this, but uh, so as far okay. as every other team goes, I would say they're probably the third best. I think Froyo okay. being the clear best. And then I would say Faint, even though they don't necessarily have the same caliber of players that Ascent does, they definitely really care and really want to win. And I, I think that would probably work in their favor and make them a little bit of a better team. Yeah, I mean, Fink, I mean, um, Cat Noises from last season has always had uh, a lot of passion for the game and, and they've really put their effort in for Prolander. And it's it's somewhat worked out for them. It's just a little bit on the payload maps. They struggled with uh, some of their Sixes players. As uh, Ascent somehow, some way picks up this first 
this is the first time they've won a mid fight. But we'll see if they can continue to use this as they are running Mela now on Heavy, but the frags are coming out, and here comes the Swarm. Seven players coming across the point for Freya Tech. It's just going to be Badonski. Nursi is going to get caught in here, popped up into the air. Honestly, I don't even know if we need to put a Mature Filter on here for what's happening to her right there. As finally she gets taken out, Showstopper going in alone. Going to at least pick up one. Might make it to no Banny with the help of Sai takes him out. And Freya Tech comes back down with the point. But the third place between the other teams, not including yourself. I mean, I think that's just it. But honestly, right now, I would say Generations would have a chance against this Ascent. You know, um, Generations, they were the fourth place team last season. Um, I definitely would put them up there. That I think they could pull off a win, especially on a payload map. I think they would have the advantage. Um, and Ascent versus... Uh, generations will be happening later in the season as we do have it's a round robin uh, type situation but I mean the real question is will anybody be able to catch up to Freya Tech? I mean obviously they're the clear advantage um, they picked up Boar this week to make themselves even more powerful uh, it's just it's going to be curious to see you know what they'll do with this you know what you know if anybody will be able to catch up with them I mean so for Velocity uh, Esports the team you're on do you believe that you can beat Freya Tech? Do you think, like, even on, like, a payload map, do you think you guys would... Because you guys played well against them last season. Yeah, I mean, they do, they kind of took our best player in Boar, so there is that. And when I, like, when we were preparing for our grand finals match against Freya, our, our, the one thing that we said was, you know, they are a better team than us, but our one saving grace is we have Boar, we have, like, you know, the godly sniper who can probably outsnipe the people on their roster, and that's like how we're going to try and win the game. So now that they've, you know, they have Boar on their roster, it's tough to find like any hole that you could possibly exploit. And I, I won't say that they're unbeatable, but they're definitely as close to that as as you could get right now. In a sense, trying to make one final push here, going across the point. But it's just not working. The coordination isn't there. They're just so misguided in their attempts. And uh, just easily being cleaned up And as they continue to hold on. But yeah, I mean, I, I, as you said, it's them picking up board just really solidified it. Um, Pink Gaming looked really good this season. They looked really good early on here. Uh, very commanding lead. Has, is Sign I'm going to use his flamethrower? You know, he's just trying to shotgun down Nursey. And uh, going all the way, Nursey reconnecting back up with Uncle Dame, but it's not going to be for much as here comes the Pyro. Going to be able to take him out or picking up one more. I mean, I, just a question of where do they go from here? I, I want to actually kind of look up the schedule for the season of, of Ascent to see who they play next week. But I'll be curious, and I'll just be curious also to see as we're going to try next week to get the new Pyro weapons into this game. So uh, unlike other leagues, which uh, I assume will not take in the new weapons, uh, we will try to allow that to happen next week with the pick ban system because that's the entire reason this is designed if there is a broken weapon um, That shouldn't be in the format, you know people people can ban it um, as it ticks down in the favor and Froyo Tech will take this and Honestly in an embarrassing game for ascent uh, Really just I have no other word than just embarrassing for what I just saw there um, As Froyo Tech just demolished them uh, so much that they just didn't even want to put in an effort at the end. Um, but yeah, let's just take a quick look at the logs here as uh, we wrap up this game. I'm expecting to see some absolutely crazy sniper stats in these logs. That's my prediction. Well, given that it's only two rounds of numbers, uh, you know, in that first round, they, they bore, couldn't get a snipe off because everybody was literally inside of their own spawn. Uh, looking at this, the thing that's really interesting is Sai on Pyro. So we have Boar, Sai, and Habib all at 18 frags, which is crazy that the Pyro uh, was doing that. The top amount of frags for Ascent is five. Just let that sink in. The most kills one player got for Ascent is 5. The lowest person in Froyotech was 10. Like, even against Generations last year, like, they held their own a lot better than Ascent is holding their own right now. Uh, they need to figure out what the hell is going wrong, and they need to do that quickly uh, if they're going to try to turn their season around to even make playoffs. 
uh, to even have a chance at this because right now this is not looking good for them. I, I, I mean, there's not a lot to pull away from these stats because they're just so utterly one-sided, but is there any other storylines that are kind of jumping out at you? Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it's pretty much cut and dry just as, uh, you know, it's demoralizing to get crushed on product on a, a cough map where you're just kind of trapped in spawn. And uh, I think maybe if if Ascent, like, really is looking to try and upset Froyo, I think you might see, like, a lot of their players practicing Sniper. But if not, then, uh, you know, you might just kind of see them half-assing sort of the game uh, in matches against Froyo in playoffs or from here on out. But I definitely think Ascent's caliber of players is so high that you can't really count them out until the Fat Lady sings. Well, they only have three more weeks to turn it, and they have yet to earn a single match point this season, currently leaving them tied in last place inside of competitive high. The other note, uh, stat line that I saw in chat, which was that uh, the total number of frags for... I'm just counting this up right now. So a total number of frags for the, the entire team of Ascent is 23 frags. 23 frags for the entire team. Boar was at 18. Sai was at 18. Like... The top people in Froyotech were five frags less than the entire team of Ascent. I mean, they obviously have quality level players, but, you know, looking at these stats, the only question I have is where. So we'll see what they can do as the season progresses. This is week two matchup. We weren't able to get the first week matchup uh, out because uh, Nysa wasn't here, but he's back now. My boy, really appreciate it, guys. Um, and if you guys want to try out Pro Lender, you can do this absolutely free. RGL.gg slash pugs. Join up. Uh, enjoy it. We do pugs uh, at least multiple times a week. It's a ton of fun. So definitely make sure that you guys come out for that. Uh, any final shout-outs you want to give out, Vipa? Uh, Shout-out to Boar. I always like to see my boy uh, owning on Sniper. That's about it. That's good stuff. All right, well, guys, toss a heart out in the chat for Nysel, who's always doing an amazing work on camera. And uh, you can see past seasons out at X Television. And besides that, yeah, just hope to see you guys out in Pugs, enjoying yourselves, and I guess we'll see you again on the other side of this Pyro update. I, I honestly cannot wait to see what Day 4 changes will bring to us. So from everybody here, have a great rest of your night.